This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Sunday, we ended uh, in the middle, really, of our study of uh, this sixth trial. There were six trials, three that were religious trials and three legal trials of Jesus, all within a, a matter of hours before he's crucified. And um, we ended our study last Sunday with this verse, verse 1 of John 19, where Pilate takes uh, Jesus and has him flogged. And so in this passage of Scripture, we're only going to look at, at these first seven verses today and then finish up uh, next week. Uh, Pilate took Jesus and, and flogged him, or had him flogged. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. Then Jesus answered him, uh, the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. Now, we left off on verse 1, and, and uh, verses 1 through 3, I want us to take a real quick look at this because Pilate has a dilemma on his hands. He has no legal grounds to give in to the demands of the Jewish Sanhedrin to have Jesus put to death. There's, nothing, there's no reason to put him to death. So he does something else, something else that is highly illegal. He has no legal grounds to put him to death, so he decides to do something illegal. He has him flogged. He had no legal basis to even have him flogged. But he did this as a way to satisfy the demands of what was turning into a mob. It was a mob scene there in his, his courtyard. So Pilate was essentially hoping that the crowd would be satisfied, I guess, with a little blood. But it was more than just a little blood, blood because the way a Roman flogging worked, it was done with a, a leather whip that had strands. I showed you a picture of, of uh, what one probably looked like uh, last Sunday. Um, it was a wooden handle with some cords came out, and there would be uh, metal or lead, pieces of lead, uh, little lead balls is what they were. It looked kind of like fishing lure, you know, weights uh, embedded in it. And then sometimes they would tie in these little pieces of bone. It was kind of like a, they looked like little pieces, like, looked like butterflies actually is what they, little pieces, but they were sharp. And sometimes it was made out of metal, sometimes out of bone. And that was also in that. And so they'd whip uh, the person that they were flogging. And the, the, that weight of the metal balls and that bone would just literally rip into the skin, and it was, it could, it was so um, damaging that it could actually cut all the way down to the bone. And they had, um, they had a, generally a rule that you couldn't flog anybody more than 40 because 40 was, was probably going to kill somebody. So the Jews would always go with 39 because they didn't want to break the law. Uh, but Pilate was not under that law. They could flog somebody as much as they wanted to. And it was, we have no idea how many times Jesus was flogged, but it was apparently done to um, create this sense of punishment uh, and in an attempt to satisfy this Jewish mob. And so this flogging that went on and the mocking crown of thorns and the robe of purple, the purple robe, and the ridiculing and calling him king of the Jews, and then the physical blows to his face. These were all part of this deep humiliation of Jesus as he faced the horrible consequences of sin. Now imagine this. They're doing this because they think that they're punishing him because he said that he was the son of God. Jesus knows that he's going through it for their sin. He knows why it's happening. Jesus is there realizing that what he's doing is he's facing the consequences of their sin. They didn't understand that. The Bible talks about that in, prophetic, in a prophetic way. For example, in Isaiah 50, verse 6, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face 
from disgrace and spitting. They were literally pulling, yanking his beard out, just grabbing it and ripping it out of his face. That was the kind of punishment that he was going through, and they were pummeling him. Isaiah 52, 14, as many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and is formed beyond that of the children of mankind. He was so beaten and so swollen from the beating that he was unrecognizable. Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Now, the Gospels of Matthew and Mark add that the soldiers were spitting on him. So there was this incredible humiliation, this thing that just went on just in the short time by, that Pilate ordered in order to try to satisfy this mob. And one of the things that they did was they took this crown of thorns and jammed it on his head. Isn't it interesting that they would do that to Jesus? They didn't do it to other people. Other people didn't get crowns of thorns. But they did this to Jesus. And there's a reason for that. They didn't understand that what they were doing. But that crown of thorns is really, really important to understand. That crown of thorns represents the curse of that was caused by sin. Back in Genesis chapter 3, look at this. And to Adam, he said, God speaks to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. The thorns represented the curse of sin. That's what sin did. It brought in pain and suffering into the world. Adam and Eve's choice to rebel against God brought pain and suffering. And the crown of thorns represented that pain and suffering. It wasn't that they were were mocking him, calling him a king, but the thorns was a reminder to all of us that he bore the curse of man's sin. And the purple robe reminds us that he was a king who was rejected by his own. They had wanted a king. He actually was the the legal heir to the throne of David. As you follow the lineage, that's why the lineage of Jesus is so important when you study it. Both on Mary's side and Joseph's side, he was the legal heir to be the king of the Jews. I mean, if they really had, if they had studied that, they would have known he is the legal heir legally but they rejected that man has always rejected jesus as king mankind has always rejected him first samuel chapter 8 verses 4 through 7 then all the elders of israel gathered together and came to samuel at ramah and said to him behold you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations Samuel had been essentially their leader because he was the voice of God for them, but they wanted a king. Samuel was getting old, and they felt like they needed a king because everybody else had a king. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people. In other words, give them what they want. He didn't say, he was saying, Oh, this is a good thing. He was just saying, Go, go ahead, obey the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Man has always rejected God as his king. Mankind has always rejected God. And so what Jesus was going through was this culmination. It was this this microcosm, uh, this this picture, if you will, of of what has happened cosmically and uh, throughout throughout the universe of what has happened with man and God where man brought the curse upon himself and Jesus bore it. And man rejected God as, his king, as their king 
and Jesus stood there being rejected by his own. And so the soldiers bring him out. They bring him out in front of the crowd, and Pilate, having once more declared Jesus innocent, just said, here's the man. Here's the man. This is the guy that you think is, is such a criminal. This is the guy, and he's beaten him. He's, he says there's nothing guilty about him at all, but he's beaten him. And Pilate may have thought that this spectacle of bringing out this king uh, whose crown was thorns and this robe, cast off robe, and his status as a prisoner would change their attitude, but it didn't. In fact, John 19, verses 6 and 7 says that when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, crucify him. It wasn't enough that he had just been beaten nearly to death. They wanted him to be crucified. They were demanding that crucifixion. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.